All About Asia invites you to learn about the multifaceted charm of exotic Asia and marvel at its mysterious natural landscapes. Asia, a hidden treasure that can be described in myriad ways. We invite you to sample its taste and mystery right now. A place that seems to hide something mysterious that sometimes inspires awe. It's Asia, a continent that never ceases to captivate people's hearts with its enigmatic charm. This structure is the only one on Earth to be visible from the moon. Its name is the Great Wall of China. The most popular section of this lengthy structure is the Great Wall of Badaling. But wait a second, we have to stop by another place before we start climbing the mountain. First, let's visit China's first museum dedicated to the Great Wall. Its 3600 square meter exhibition hall puts on display photos, models, and signposts introducing the 3000 year history of the Great Wall. Wow, reaching the Great Wall, one of the seven wonders of the world, is not easy. Hold on, this gigantic relic was built by Chinese kings to protect their country from invasions by northern neighbors. Rain or shine, hordes of people come to see the Great Wall year-round to witness the largest structure in human history. Let's hurry up to see as much of it as we can. According to the map, the wall stretches 2,700 kilometers. Its total length, with all branches included, reaches 6,000 kilometers. The Great Wall was first built in 6th century BC. If you look down at it from a cable car, you'll see that it's located on rogue mountains 1,000 meters above sea. How is it possible to build this magnificent structure here? The wall is three to eight meters tall, depending on topography. Its width ranges from four to six meters. If you build a five meter wide, 35 centimeter thick road using all materials that were used in the construction of the Great Wall, it can circumvent the earth three or four times. That's amazing indeed. <laughs> 뭐 우주에서 달에서 보면 이렇게 보인다는 것처럼 정말 좀 크게 보입니다. 앞뒤 좌우 뭐쫙 연결되어 있으니까 어 대단합니다. 달에서 보인다는 거는 알고 오셨나요? 예, 저도 달에서 보이는 사람이 만든 건물 중에 유일하게 달에서 보이는 거 그건 알고 왔습니다. 근데 실제로 말리장성이 달에서 안 보인답니다. 어? 어, 보인다고 들었습니다. 그냥 중국 과학원에서 판명 났대요. 아. Historic records say that the wall was built by a general who took with him 300,000 troops to the northern region. But nobody knows exactly how many people were involved in the construction. The Great Wall, which is hard to build using even today's technology, is called the world's longest tomb because workers who died during construction were buried right on the spot. That's what makes this place especially sad as we enjoy it as a tourist attraction nowadays. <laughs> the Great Wall of China, a mysterious fortress built by humans 3,000 years ago. Make sure to visit it someday. This time we're heading to another mysterious structure in Asia. Scores of people travel long distances early in the morning to come here. Only when you pass through this huge arch can you feel the magnificence of the Taj Mahal. As you know, the Taj Mahal was built by Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan as a tomb for his beloved wife when she died. Can you see those white sharp pointed domes on the roofs over there? There are 22 of them because it took 22 years to build the Taj Mahal. Isn't that mysterious? This front gate built from red sandstones looks very charismatic, as if it's protecting the king and the queen. Shall we look at this beautiful structure from afar? The huge central dome made of white granite, the four-cornered minaret, and the Mughal garden with a canal in a vast field look as if they're floating in the air. The walls, inside and outside, are decorated with precious and semi-precious gemstones. 
A special mosaic technique was used to carve patterns on the granite walls. Let's take a closer look. Emperor Shah Jahan was so saddened by the death of his wife, who died in labor, that his hair turned gray in just a day. It was his love for his wife that created this masterpiece of Muslim art. Some 20,000 craftsmen were deployed over 22 years to build it. As it took longer than planned to complete its construction, India's national budget was severely undermined. The white granite dome symbolized the gentle and embracing nature of a woman, while the four-cornered minaret symbolized a man or the king. It looks as if the king is always ready to protect the queen. Isn't that enough to call the Taj Mahal a glorious tomb? The Taj Mahal changes its color several times a day according to the sun angle. That's what makes this structure all the more mysterious. Very beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't say anything else. Mm. 와서 보니까 굉장히 웅장하고 또 데, 디테일한 그런 세밀한 조각들이 정말 아 이게 과연 사람의 손으로 했을까 싶을 정도로 굉장히 멋있었고요. The Taj Mahal is nestled on the bank of the Jumana River. Emperor Shah Jahan wanted to build his own tomb across the river and connect it to the Taj Mahal with a bridge. Isn't that impressive? The Taj Mahal looks most beautiful when its white granite walls glow in the light of the full moon. But unfortunately, this can be seen only five days a month, and only 400 visitors a day can witness it for just 30 minutes. So don't miss it. Taj Mahal the masterpiece of Indian Muslim art and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The mysterious proportions of its structures, the elegant curves of its domes and arches, and the beautiful love of Emperor Shah Jahan make this place unforgettable. The city of Hardwar, meaning gateway to the abode of gods, is one of the seven most sacred places in Hinduism. This is also where the Ganges River, which stretches all the way from the Himalayas to Bangladesh, was first formed as a river and began its long journey. A Hindu legend has it that Hardwar is one of the four places where the holy half-man, half-bird Garuda spilled the elixir of immortality called Amrita. The river is always crowded with people swimming or bathing in it, which are very important religious rituals in Hinduism. The, this is River Ganga, and it is considered to be very religious river here. This one? Yeah. It is considered to be, it is coming from Lord Shiva, and everybody thinks that it is a very pure river, it is very religious, then if they take bath in that, that they will uh, be holy, they will pour out their every... Uh, bad things and everything. In the beginning, the Ganges River was a heavenly river of abundance. But one virtuous man received permission with much effort to relocate it to the earth to alleviate prolonged droughts. Ganges descended to the earth through the lock of hair of God Shiva, who was worried that the huge stream of water might destroy everything around. That's why Hindus regard the Ganges River as the hair of God Shiva and the place where he bathes. Apart from being a sacred place, to Indians, the Ganges River is also their home. You can often see people here not only swimming, but doing laundry as well. Though it's far from clear, Indians regard the water in this river sacred and even take it home and drink it. You can see how humans coexist with nature. Every Hindu in India shaves their head at least once in their lifetime in the Ganges River. First time, first time. First time? First time. One year ago, first year. Ah, okay. So, because of his, his, his first haircut? First haircut in Haridwar? Yeah, in Haridwar. Ah, okay. First time here. Ah, okay. So, and why? Why first haircut in Haridwar? Rita Purani. Rita Purani? Purani Rita. Ah, okay, okay. Ganga River is a uh, very, very holy river for India. And particularly for Hindus. Because uh, it came at the time of Lord Shiva. Religion is an inextricable part of the everyday lives of Hindus. People choose flower boats at this store. 
They look serious as they try to choose the best boat. Every evening, the Ganges morning prayer, Arti Puja, is held in Hardwar. Boats filled with flowers are offered to gods as sacrifice. What is this name? This is a Bedi. Bedi. Uh, what is this for? Kanga Arti. Kanga Arti. Puja. Yes. Arti Sham ko pone saad baje hoti hai. Jo Arti samat tone ke baad ye deep dan kiya jata hai Ganga ji mein. Chhodne ke liye deep dan maachi jala ke isko deep jalta hai. Isko Ganga ji mein chhoda jata hai. Wo isliye ki hamara parivar sukh shanti se rahe aur hamari tarakki ho. Today is the first day of the new year according to the Hindu calendar. That's why crowds of people are expected to visit this place. Several hours are left before the prayer. People pass their time and escape from the heat by swimming in the sacred river. It looks like a festival. Ganga river is famous. Ganga river is very, 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 very good, good for the, the uh, God. Of, I think the God also no? yes, here. Yeah. So it is a very, very good uh, Ganga river. So many people are standing here. Uh, Especially 13th of April. More and more people flock to the banks of the river. The place is almost packed now. Some of them have their fortunes read before the prayer. What did it say? Is it good? Shh! The prayer finally begins. Everyone prays to monk songs. Seeing these devout Hindus praying is amazing. During the ritual, people float their flower boats into the river. Some float leaf boats filled with flowers and burning candles. The boats will travel to gods carrying people's wishes. Wow, that's a big boat. What wish is it carrying? Given the size of the boat, it must be carrying a very big wish. When dusk falls, the monks pray with candles in their hands. The prayer reaches its climax. The Ganges River looks like a truly sacred place where people worship the mysterious Mother Nature and reflect upon themselves. Siem Reap of Cambodia is home to the magnificent historic relics of the Angkor Empire, which once surpassed the Roman Empire of Greece. We invite you there right now. These mysterious relics were found in the jungles in 1853. The grandest of them, of course, is the Angkor Wat Temple Complex, which is surrounded by a large man-made moat. This Hindu temple complex was built in the 12th century when the Angkor Empire was at its zenith. Unlike other structures in the area which all face east, Angkor Wat faces west. That's presumed to be the reason it's associated with death. <laughs> Here's a postcard for you. It's the reflection of the mysterious and beautiful Angkor Wat in the pond. Isn't it marvelous? But if you stay here for too long, there will not be enough time to see other places. Let's go inside. Watch your step. Hmm, what's that? The central tower of Angkor Wat is surrounded by three galleries. These hundreds of pillars bear historic scenes and Hindu scriptures inscribed on them. The rich imagination of those who built this place and its artistic value are incredible. You can see Sanskrit letters inscribed on the walls. Sanskrit is an ancient Indian language. Thanks to these engravings, researchers were able to study it. Looking at the sculptures engraved on the walls and stone pillars, you can feel the spirit and passion of people who lived back then. Angkor Wat is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the seven wonders of the world. Some 600,000 people visit it annually. Though it was built for the Hindu god Vishnu, nowadays it serves as a Buddhist temple. Its narrow and steep staircase is especially impressive. It shows how hard it is to reach God. You almost have to crawl to reach the top. 
This temple is incredibly sturdy because it's supported by myriad rocks. It's uh, incredible. I've never seen uh, such uh, amazing uh, things uh, before. All uh, made by uh, manpower and um, it's, uh, it's amazing, yeah. Angkor Wat, whose radius exceeds 30 kilometers, is home to dozens of temples, royal courts and other ancient structures. Angkor Thom is the largest of them. It's said to be protected by angels and demons. Now keep your eyes wide open. When you enter the south gate, you'll see a face sculptured on the four walls built of sandstone. Is that the face of the king who built the temple? Unfortunately, nobody knows yet. The entrance is very narrow. Visitors should stand in line to be able to enter it. It's only big enough for one elephant to pass through it, and it was built this way on purpose. Once you pass through the gate, you'll discover a world of architecture of the Anchor Empire. These sculptures are called Gopra. The Bayan Temple has more than 30 Gopras. They're presumed to be the face of the Buddha. Their gentle smile is called the smile of Angkor. It's like the Cambodian version of the Great Stone Face. All these murals have a story to tell. Some of them depict the Vietnamese battles of Jaya Verman VII, who is presumed to have been a king after winning the War of Vietnam. The murals look as if they're alive. The more you look at them, the more astounding it is. These enigmatic sculptures and three-dimensional murals captivate the hearts of anyone who visits this place. Interestingly enough, this place is full of uncompleted works they represent the rise and fall of the Angkor Empire. Now, get ready, because we're going to visit the star of Angkor Wat. But it looks a bit scary. It's surrounded by tall trees like monster serpents in ancient legends. It does look eerie indeed. This temple, engulfed by the gigantic trees, was built by Jayavarman VII for his mother. It's famous as the filming site of the movie Tomb Raider. Here, you can witness how nature and architecture coexist. It's simply fascinating. It's impossible to remove the trees now because they support the temple. It's a beautiful spot to take pictures for tourists. The ones that I've seen, but I find this really interesting with how the roots are kind of um, grown, grown over the temple. Every little sound echoes through the temple and can be even heard outside. It was probably the place where ancient kings found solace secretly from others. Angkor Wat is a brilliant legacy that is even shown on the national flag of Cambodia. you want to visit a truly unique place with spellbinding scenery? Then follow us to Tubataha Reefs, the dream place of every scuba diver. We invite you to a paradise hidden deep in the ocean. It's an early morning and it's still dark. A boat prepares to leave the port. These people, who are from all over the world, are here to visit the Tupotaha Reefs. Some of them take time to relax. Others are busy making file checks. But why are the Tupotaha Reefs so popular? Um, so I'm hoping to see lots of shark. Um, shark. Some shark. Uh, maybe some manta ray. Manta ray. Manta ray, like a big, uh, big stingray, a very big stingray, manta ray. And if we are very lucky, we might see what's called a whale shark, which is the biggest fish in the world. It's about 10 meters long, but we'll have to be very lucky to see one of those. 
The reason they depart so early is because it's going to be a long voyage. It'll take them five nights and six days to reach their destination. What they're going to do in Tupataha is quite simple. The Tupataha reefs are open to divers only four months a year. That's why divers have to make reservations at least six months in advance. When is the best time to enjoy scuba diving in Tupataha? The season for Tupataha is from March until mid to late June. The rest of the year, it's very <clears throat> the seas are very rough and it's undiveable. So the, the, the best time to go is for three very short months where the seas are quite calm. The Tupataha Reefs, which these people have been looking forward to visiting, become closer. They finally arrive after an exhausting voyage. Located in the Sulu Sea off Palawan Island of the Philippines, it's one of the most scenic spots in Southeast Asia. It's home to the largest coral reef in Southeast Asia and rare marine species. In 1993, Tupataha Reefs National Park was inscribed as a UNESCO Natural Heritage Site. Looking at myriad beautiful fish here, you get an illusion that you're in a huge aquarium. To protect the local ecosystem from divers, the park has strict regulations that ban littering and causing damage to living organisms. Even sharks are among protected species in this area, which was designated as a natural protection zone. Why were sharks designated as a protected species? It's estimated that over 100 million sharks a year are finned illegally for shark fin soup. And so this is one of the last places on Earth that is protected from that. And so we have a, a fairly large shark population and that's why a lot of divers go there to see the sharks. The Tubutaha reefs are home to beautiful marine species that are impossible to see on land. Let's hope that its pristine landscape will be preserved forever. If you want to feel the mystery of nature, the Tubutaha reefs are the place to be. This time, we're going to visit a place that can be reached after a 12-hour bus ride from Manila, the capital of the Philippines. Wow, it's very picturesque. We finally arrive at a village, but it turns out we still have a long way to go to reach Banawe. We have to climb this mountain on foot. Will we be able to reach our destination today? Well, let's put aside our worries and get going. Thanks to the scenic surrounding, we reached the top before we noticed. Bati is located on the extensive mountain chain called Cordillera. You must be wondering why we have decided to visit this hard to reach place. There are tiered rice fields in many other countries like China, Vietnam, Thailand, Nepal, Indonesia and Japan. But this place is home to the world's largest tiered rice field. Who made this vast field? The tiered field shown on the 1,000 peso banknote is none other than this field. In 1995, it was added to the UNESCO list of World Heritage Sites. Located 1,500 meters above sea, the length of this field reaches 22,400 kilometers. That's half the Earth's circumference. The fact that people were able to create this field in ancient times when science was not developed yet is a mystery. How do tourists coming to this remote place enjoy it? We read about them uh -huh. and uh, we saw some pictures and we wanted to see. I think it's uh, impressive, especially this wall here. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's not like the, the terraces you see on the other side where you have the valley, just on the, the slopes of the valley here. It's like, I don't know, a piece of the mountain has been carved out. Okay. Then who are the people cultivating rice on this tiered field, which is one of the eight wonders of the world? Let's take a closer look at it. 
Batid is located far from the hustle and bustle of modern life. We were worried that its residents must be afraid of strangers, but they've become used to tourists since their hometown became a famous attraction. A man-made marvel that was created for survival. We have met with its people and heard their stories. Asia is a mysterious continent full of mesmerizing things that are more mysterious than the Arabian Nights. We hope you will visit it someday for sure.